Hi, this will be the second part of the horizon uh, picking. And I want to point out that this is where we left it with four, um, uh, four horizon lines. And we'd like to just make a quick change. I'm going to go up and take the red lines off up here. And I'm going to put the horizon grid. So this is now the grid that covers the whole area in the squares. Uh, for this for this particular uh, project. Okay, now we have several things we can look at here. One of them is we can come over to the uh, 3D window. I'm going to do so, and it looks like we have all of these lines that were um, horizons that were picked went only as far as the red uh, the red uh, seismic uh, section coming off. I want to emphasize that actually part of this is underneath all of this. So as we go down, we can actually with this use this feature, which is to manipulate a plane. In this case, it's the time so that we can actually move this down. And now we can see if I go back to the hand and go back up, then we're looking just above this particular surface. So you're really seeing more and providing more uh, horizon picking than you might have imagined. Now at this point we just have the red uh, colors that are here. We do have color maps that we can use to work with this. So I'm going to go up to this area and this will be in the flat rock horizon grid and I'm going to double click that. I'm going to see the by chance the colors as one of the tabs up in the upper, up on the top of this page and I'm going to it's in global colored table uh, but what we're seeing is nothing but the red which happens to be at the end of this particular uh, picture so I'm going to hit the local private color table I'm going to go to keep old local color color table and let's put this in place and then we want to see this auto scale color table to data and the auto scale means that it just takes whatever the maximum data from the uh, from whatever it is that's uh, doing a, a color scale to the other end so I'm going to hit OK with this and what do you know we end up with uh, the surfaces in which they have colors I'm going to take the seismic out for just a, just a little bit here so that we can see what this looks like. We, we have everything from the purples and violets all along one bare side of this all the way up into red uh, features at some of the extremes here. So this gives you a way to describe exactly what, in this case, what the, uh, the time, the uh, milliseconds time down to the surface uh, below. Okay, so when I can take that out, and so this is what we have in terms of horizon. And what we're, the next step that we're going to take is going to be looking at the, uh, well, okay, pause and um, as you can see we have the horizon done in this gridded way. I'm now going to do a, a, sw a little bit of a switch to look at and show basically how di diagonal horizon picks can be used. One of the things that I can show you that we sometimes do in picking these features is to put the addition of this, the rectangle, the square uh, areas that are largely north in line and cross line. Here we can put in uh, lines that correspond to diagonal uh, uh, features here. So one of the things that I put into place was actually using random lines. The first random line is in the direction uh, heading approximately northwest and that there is then a random line which is in the northern eastern direction. And one can use the same kind of steps down here in the, uh, in the player in which an increment of seven was used in order to get those distances which come 
more closely spaced as they go through the die, the uh, the grid. So I showed you an example that you can also use those lines using the interpretation window. You can actually see these kinds and actually uh, do the uh, the picking in these diagonal directions if one chooses. We can see that as we look and zoom in to these particular uh, features, you can see that the picks from the horizons are individual points as they distributed over the area. Next, we're going to look at surface and features, which will be a smooth surface across this whole area. So the way that we would like to do this is to take, take this feature. I'm going to just, um, I've got the flat, flat rock horizon grid that we provided with earlier. And what we're going to be looking at is a, a form to use to end up with a surface. This over here, this blue sort of shell-like feature, looks like it's make for making surfaces. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to end up with this. It's a make edit surface it's called and it is sometimes when this this hasn't been used before it will be blank and sometimes I'll show you at the end that it can be beneficial to clear the data when you want to do something uh, a different surface process. Okay so under the main input which will be the the uh, uh, the horizons with their picks are going to be up here. So this is going to be the input to that. It has, it's a, um, uh, it's a blackened uh, surface and I can come up, I, so I pick it and I come up and I press the arrow. So it puts the rock, the flat rock horizon grid in. It's not really necessary to put something in here. There are a number of other choices. However, I'm going to use the automatic, which will determine, create a, a, um, a boundary around the data. And I want to come down and I want to put a boundary, a boundary around that area. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to play, you can play three in there or one or two or zero or more in a variety of ways. Okay, the way we're going to apply this is I'm going to go and hit um, OK. And now we see a couple of things here. One, all of the yellow green features in the upper part um, are showing there, but I can take those out. And now this looks like a different kind of surface. Um, just as we found earlier, we might want to take this surface so that it can be seen through the seismic. So I'm going to go in and take Z out. Now I could look at it a little bit with the seismic surfaces that you have. Notice that it is continuous. It is not, um, it's not a um, feature with just individual points, but rather a smooth surface. And it also has contour um, lines from it. Now, this is a, this is a nice way to, to show the data. Again, we have a color issue and we can do things with color in just the same way. Notice that down here is flat rock horizon grid. It really probably ought to be turned right now into a surface grid. So I'm planning to go to info. I want to put instead of this, I want surface. And the space. And we also want to look at colors. Again, we'll go to the local color table and we'll go to the second one of these and I have to move that up a little bit to work with it and I'm going to do an OK. And now I have that same surface that we're seeing in shape as we look at it is also um, uh, has contours and it has colors which make it very very easy. Okay so if we if we have this we can look at it and uh, enjoy it. Uh, we can also uh, have the potential to make these things have a little more uh, amplitude 
uh, some vertical exaggeration on these. Sometimes that makes it easier to hear some of these or to be able to see features that you might be seeing and might be interesting in some places in this uh, database. So this is this really represents the the conclusion of the horizons and surfaces for this particular area. Thank you.